And it's try hard. <laughs> What's up, dude? So, yeah, here we are. Uh, this is my little setup, as you can see. So, yeah, I have to do some KSP flying lessons in things. So, what should we do? We'll just do this one, which is my default save. So, yeah, flying lessons. <laughs> Don't mind. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Alright, so, here we are on the space plane hangar, where all the aircraft stuff goes down. I'm sure you know. You're familiar with this, of course, yeah. Yep, yep. Minimal setup, good for sure. Gets the job done, got the nice title up top, chat over here, which is a new thing as of today. So, um... Aircraft are an interesting s subject in KSP, especially considering that the aerodynamics are not super accurate. Uh, so we'll just take a look at one of the stock planes to see what they do, to make sure we have kind of an idea of the principles of what we need to use to get this to work correctly. So this is probably the simplest plane you can build in KSP. This is the Aeris 3A, which is stock. Um, it's got a cockpit, some winglets, wings, elevons, more winglets, an engine, and some liquid fuel, and an air intake. As well as landing gear, of course. <laughs> um, so, the setup for what you need to make it to work is pretty basic. You just need a cockpit or the control system. Um, any of these pods works, except for this one, but that's a, a mod. Um, so yeah, you just need control, fuel, and an engine. And that's about as simple as you can get with planes. Uh, is just the long tube full of fuel and thrust uh, but how to actually but how you actually get it working is a little bit more complicated than that so here on the side we've got three little buttons next to the symmetry and angle snap ones so you got the center mass which shows you where the center mass of the aircraft is and then that ties in really closely with the center of lift. Now this is a kind of peculiar plane uh, because the center of lift is in front of the center of mass but you'll notice that it's not very far in front of it. It's only about to the midpoint. So what you want to do for the most part is keep the center of lift really close to the center of mass behind it is usually where you want to go. So, what we can do real quick is just test it out, see how it behaves. So, the way the Aris is set up with the center of lift in front of the center of mass, it's going to pitch up just a little bit when we fly. So we'll just full throttle this who's down the runway and take off. And that was a really easy takeoff, it just lifted right up. As you can see this has quite a bit of pitch control. Unfortunately it's kind of unstable. So, <coughs> um, and then that's funkiness. Uh, yeah, you can see that the Aeris was unstable, so <laughs> revert to the space plane hangar to get that checked out again. So, 
The Aeris is a pretty good plane. It's got a lot of pitch control. You got these elevons. These ones are turned off of pitch and are used for roll almost exclusively. Um, we can get into that later. Uh, these ones are used for pitch as well as these winglets up front. So this gives us two pitch control surfaces and they're a ways away from the center mass which is what you want for larger amounts of pitch control. So um, because of how physics works, the farther away these are from the center of mass, the more torque they will apply, and so the more turning you'll have. If we were to move them closer, it would turn less sharply. Um, we can take a look at another plane, like the Raven Spear. This is another stock plane. Um, so this is another, um, different from the Eris because it has the center of lift behind the center of mass. But it's not very far behind it, so its characteristics will be different because it'll want to pitch down just a little bit instead of pitch up like the Eris. Um, you can see that when you fly, so uh, this also has the control surface is closer to the center mass, so it'll be less aggressive. Remember, we've got two of them, which helps deal with that. So let's test this out. Just make sure, just to see how it behaves. And because this has four engines, we're gonna go two-thirds throttle. So you can see that it's a lot less aggressive, but it's also, again, kind of unstable. And it doesn't have a lot of roll authority when it's recovering from that. Uh, so that's just part of the design. Uh, the stock planes aren't the greatest feats of aerodynamic engineering, but they're, they're good for starter planes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off, fly for a ways, and then I'll show you what the center of lift being slightly behind the center mass does. So we're currently running with the SAS on, but if we turn that off because we have the center of lift slightly behind the center mass, it won't behave like I expected. Um, it'll actually pitch up a little bit. Um, Alright then. Uh, but because of how the center mass and center of lift are positioned, the plane will automatically want to pitch up or down. Goodness. Uh, so let's revert back to this place, Spain Hanger. Um, so, what we kind of need to do. So, what, we've, what I've covered so far is we you know, how the center mass, center of lift relationship, sort of. Um, I guess the basic setup of a plane. So, um, what we can do is start building a new plane. And this is, uh, this requires a lot of, like, practice to get right. Uh, but once you get it, like, the techniques down, uh, planes are a very cool thing to use. 
So we're just going to start out with the Mark 1 cockpit, which is the most basic of the aircraft cockpits. Um, we can also use the Mark 1 inline, but that's uh, incomplete and only useful in a few cases. Excuse me. And then what we need now is we'll need some fuel. And there it is. So we could go with an Aeris style setup. We could do the fuel tank and the engines. Um, we're not going to do that. We're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to get a dual engine setup. So, we've got three fuel tanks now, and if we want, we can get the fuel from the center one flowing into the side ones. And we probably do want that, of course, so that we don't waste this. And then, next, we want some air intakes. Because uh, jet engines require air, unlike rocket engines. Uh, the intake air is uh, collected by these air intakes and then it's used by the engines. Uh, it's similar to how rocket engines work, except the air for the combustion in rocket engines is stored as oxidizer. Whereas these just use liquid fuel and then air intake, and then intake air. Now we got our center mass here. We can um, play some landing gear next. Landing gear are kind of tricky to place. You want them to be balanced, of course. You can put one up here in the front, which is all right. That one is usually a given. Just put one up in the front. Uh, but then back. But then positioning the wheels on the rear is kind of tricky. We don't want it too close to the center of mass, because if we land weird, it can become back heavy and then tip onto its, uh, onto its back. So we want the wheels to be slightly behind it. And if we need it to be further back, we can just use the offset tool, which you can get to by pressing this button up in the top left, or by pressing 2. Just click on the wheels, and then move them back a little bit. It's also good to have a wider wheelbase, because then you're less likely to tip over onto your side. So you can just move them out to the side, and because of how KSP does these part connections now, uh, it's not a big deal if they're not touching. But for safety's sake, we'll attach some struts. We don't want these wiggling all over the place when we land. Because that's a great way to get your plane ruined. So, now we've got pretty much everything we need to make this plane work. Except for the flight part. So, what we can do now is work on some wings. Wings can be all different kinds. We've got the big delta wings to these little tiny winglets. Oops. And they're all good for different purposes. Like the winglets are good for stabilizing. If we want yaw stability, we can put these up top and make them vertical. Uh, but what we need is lift. And that's best achieved by using the big delta wings or the small delta wings or any of these ones. Structural wings, to swept wings, to these wing connectors. So, it actually looks like this could be a viable setup if we move the lift back a little bit. So, what we're gonna do, just for 
the sake of trying this. We're gonna put some... We're gonna keep these wings here. We'll attach them to the main fuselage with struts so that we don't have them wobbling too much. And then, we have the lift we need, but we also need control. And that's where things like the elevons and the winglets come in, and canards come in handy. <coughs> so, it usually pays to put some of these on the back. So we'll start off with an L on 3 on the back. And then we'll use an elf on two. And then we can also put an AVR8 winglet on the front, just for some extra control. <laughs> now this is where we get into all the different ways we can utilize our uh, control surfaces. And just for yaw control, I'll put some extra limits on the top. So there are multiple ways to utilize um, the elevons and the winglets and the canards. Uh, so we'll just start with these ones, the elevon 2s on the end. So because these are so far out, they're going to be applying a lot of roll, which is um, control along this axis. So if we're looking at this way, these will control, these will go up and down, and this will go the opposite of this one. And then this will make the plane roll clockwise or counterclockwise here. <laughs> um, and that's just roll. So that's pretty easy. So because these are so far out, we're going to make these roll. So we can just right click on them, and then click the yaw button to turn off that, and then click the pitch button to turn that off. We could use this for pitch if we want, but we don't need to, because we've got one here, we've also got another pitch surface here. So for this one, because it's closer, we're going to stick with pitch, so we can turn off yaw and roll. And for this one as well, we'll turn off yaw and roll. Unfortunately, these can be adjusted in flight, so if you end up having too much pitch control, you can turn it down a little bit. And yes, I do agree, it looks pretty darn awesome. And our DJ is freezing up, so we'll just pause that for now. So yeah, um, this is freaking cool. So, and now for pitch. Because the pitch is up and down in terms of the nose, so the pitch will make this nose go up and down, and that's what helps with turning and not hitting the ground. So we want surfaces that will affect that, so the AVR8 winglets and the Elvon 3s, and even the Elvon 2s will help with that. However, we don't want too much pitch authority or we'll get out of control, so we're just sticking with the Elvon 3s and the AVR8s. Now yaw is an interesting uh, control. This turns the plane from side to side. So yaw is what you would use to turn, for example, a car or a truck or something on the ground or a boat. Um, planes don't use it so much because it's not in line with the lift. It's along the axis of lift, which makes it behave kind of funny. So we don't want a lot of it because we don't use it. We just want control over it so that we don't start side slipping. So we'll stick with these Delta Deluxe winglets uh, controlling yaw. Um, and that's all you really need to do to get the control surfaces set up. So you want some for pitch, some for roll, and some for yaw. 
And you can make the pitch and roll ones overlap. And you can also make the pitch and yaw ones overlap depending on how they're set up. But you don't want too many control surfaces affecting one axis because that will make the plane less stable when you're turning. So we'll just name this demo craft. And we'll take it for a spin. Now, because I have a lot of experience with planes, I don't expect it to fly terribly well. We'll switch to daytime. Just so we can see. And so, this will be also a bit of a lesson in controlling your plane. So, there's several controls similar to how rockets work. So up here we've got things like lights, which are by default built into the landing gear. We've also got the gear themselves. We don't really want to close those on ground. And we've also got brakes for the landing gear. And these help bring your aircraft to a stop when it's landing. So right now brakes are off, so they have a little green light. And this is dark. If we press the brakes button or we push B, we can toggle it. B is just a short-term toggle. If you release B, the brakes will turn off. Press them, they'll turn on. With this button, you can toggle them and get them to stay there. And you can tell they're on by the orange light or this being lit up. And hello, best friend. It's been a while since I've streamed, hasn't it? Um, so anyway, uh, brakes aren't really useful for taking off because they slow you down and don't speed you up, of course. Um, so we'll turn those off. Now as with rockets, you've got the throttle down here. And shift and control will affect that. You can also use X to instantly turn it off and Z as of this update to throttle up to max instantly. So, because I'm not familiar with this plane, we're going to stick with about 50% throttle on this takeoff, just so that we get an idea of how it handles during takeoff. And one thing that's almost always something you should do with aircraft is turn on SAS. You don't need any of the fancy controls like prograde, retrograde, normal, radial, you don't need any of that, you just need stability assist so that the plane stays level when you're flying. So, we'll turn on the engines by staging, turn off the brakes, and we'll go. So, most aircraft can take off around 100 meters per second, so we're just going to try to pull up here. Unfortunately, this plane does not want to take off. Which makes me think it has downforce. And there we go. Now, once we're off the runway, we've got a lot of control. Because of how many wings we have, we have a lot of pitch authority and a lot of pitch stability. Unless we do that. We don't have as much roll control as we like because we have so many wings, which increases our wings, our roll stability. So, pitch on aircraft is kind of funny. Because they run on an inverted axis for pitch, S nose is up and W nose is down. So try hard, you'll want to remember that for when you're flying aircraft. And depending on how much pitch authority you have, you can do rolls, or you can do loops, or whatnot. Um, now, as for turning aircraft, which is a little bit more complicated than turning a car where you would use the all. 
which on this plane and most other planes isn't very stable for turning. On aircraft, because of how they're set up, you'll want to use, for the most part, a banking term. And Geek for Life is here, hello! Um, so for the most part, you'll want to use banking turns. So what you can do to achieve one of those is pretty simple. You want to roll over in the direction you want to go so that your top of your plane is facing the direction you want to go, and then pitch up. And you'll want to adjust your roll as you go through the turn. And then once you're at the heading you want, you can just roll back over. <laughs> Yaw turns on this aircraft especially aren't as good because they're so f because the yaw control surfaces are so far away from the center of mass. Our center of mass is almost in line with the fuselage, which is hidden, but it's there. And our yaw control surfaces are very high up compared to that center of mass. So they will not only affect the yaw of the aircraft, they'll also affect the roll. and that's something that's not ideal. Let me turn down spacecraft volume. There we go. No worries, Geek. See you soon, I suppose. I hope. <laughs> Any case. Um... So yeah, yaw usually isn't ideal for turning because the control surfaces are so far away from the center of mass, which is in line with the fuselage for the most part, and the force exerted by the yaw control surfaces is very high up compared to the center of mass, so it will cause roll when you use yaw. There are ways around this by putting the yaw control surfaces in line, like using an elevon or something, and putting it on the wing, assuming your wing is in the middle and in line with the center of mass. So for the most part, you'll want to use banking terms, which aren't very hard to execute. You just roll and then pitch. So... It's also a matter of stability for your aircraft, <sighs> but that depends on how your aircraft is set up. And this aircraft in particular wasn't designed very well. I just threw on a bunch of wings. Um, but it's a good demonstration. Nice. So. One thing that I will recommend you use when turning is precision controls. So if you look down in the bottom left, you'll see your stage and uh, pitch and pitch roll yaw indicators. So, for example, if we pitch up, you can see these go up, bounce back down. So pitch is moving when we're pitching, roll is moving when we're rolling, and then there's also a little bit of yaw as stability assist helps us out. And then yaw will affect yaw. And we've got a little bit of roll as stability assist tries to help. So under normal circumstances, these are orange, and they just go straight to their maximum or minimum values. And then they reset to zero very quickly. If we turn off stability assist, you can see that they go a little bit faster. Um, one thing that is really nice to, and very helpful when flying planes is precision controls. Usually that's um, just press caps lock to toggle those on, and then controls will be a little bit slower. And so you don't have the, the sharp turns. So if you watch, or you're rolling pretty quickly, here, we turn on precision controls, 
It's more of a smooth acceleration into the roll. And we keep rolling for longer. So you'll see that it just it kind of smoothly goes over there, whereas this was a lot faster. So precision controls are good for aircraft that have a little bit too much control over things um, so that you don't have to worry as much about oversteering. Now back to adjusting the control surfaces in flight. If you need to um, adjust how much control you have over a certain axis, you can just right click on the winglet and then toggle the air the axis that it will affect. So we just turned on roll and so now we have more roll control because we've added two control surfaces to our roll. Now this plane seems to be pretty good with roll already, so we'll keep those turned off of roll. Another important part of how aircraft are designed is uh, stability as the center of mass changes because this fuselage is draining fuel and these ones are not simply because of how the fuel is set. <coughs> so as you drain fuel your stability will change in your center because your center of mass will shift. In this case it looks like the center of mass is shifting farther backwards which will make the center of mass closer to the center of lift and get them in about the same point. And depending on how your aircraft is designed, that can be either a good thing or a bad thing. In the case of this plane, it seems to be bad because we're losing a bit of that stability we need to fly smoothly. This can be alleviated by adding precision controls, but for the most part it's just uh, something you have to deal with. because of how aircraft are designed. So, so as your fuel drains, you'll want to fly a little bit more carefully depending on how the fuel drains. And we can take a look at that back in the space plane hangar after we land this. Now, landing is a weird kind of date and pretty dangerous process, especially when your aircraft is losing stability like this. Honestly, I have no idea what it's doing. So, I really don't know what it's doing. Um, it's confusing me. So landing is tricky to master and also pretty dangerous until you do so. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to just make sure you're lined up with the runway and you might just have to go straight north or straight south to do that. But then as you get closer to in line with it, you can turn into it so that you're approaching it and also getting closer to inline with it. And once you get and as you get closer, you'll want to keep turning until you're facing it. Now in this case we're heading up, we're coming at it from 90 from a heading of 90. And so 
Um, we're just heading east. After you get lined up, you want to turn down your engines so that you slow down. And then you can continue to correct your trajectory so that you get close to centered with it. And then as you get closer, you'll want to flare up a little bit so that you keep, so that you don't touch down too hard. And then touch down and brakes. And it usually helps to cut your engine just before touchdown so that you continue to decelerate because of drag. Um, I might be posting this to YouTube. Uh, I'll definitely archive it here on Twitch. Uh, YouTube might be a, a re-upload as well. Um, so that was a pretty good landing. I could have explained it better, uh, so we can just recover this vessel and then build a better plane and then launch it. So, actually, I've already built a pretty good plane, so let me grab that from my older saves. That's here. There we go. So yeah, I'll put this on Twitch for sure, and then I will likely re-upload it to YouTube as well. No worries, dude. At least I'm doing it. So these planes I've had for a little while. Um, some of my proudest pieces of aeronautical engineering. Don't worry about interrupting my commentary. It's what I'm here to do. I'm here to provide commentary and also answer questions. So this is an aircraft I've had for a couple versions now. This is the Vortex 1B. Um, standard. Okay. So I've had this plane for a couple versions now. Um, this is probably my proudest piece of uh, aircraft engineering. This is incredibly stable, it flies at low speeds. Um, it's just an all around really good plane. Uh, so you can take a look at it. Um, turns out, my center of lift is slightly in front of my center of mass, uh, which is alright. and then the center of mass moves backwards as we drain fuel. Um, Jade Blade, I was doing song requests earlier. Unfortunately, uh, it was hogging my internet for a little while. Uh, so I might turn it back on soon. Uh, we'll have to take a look at that. If you want to request the song, you just do exclamation, part, exclamation mark songs, like you'll see in chat. Uh, a few seconds ago, probably. Um, and that will be instructions on how to request a song. So, this plane has its center of mass slightly behind the center of lift. Uh, <coughs> that's not a problem, though. So, I'll use this plane to show off the landing again just because it goes a lot slower, and so landing it is a bit easier. So this plane can fly at barely any throttle. It just needs a few meters per second to lift off.
at full out. We are now in the air. So this plane flies really low and really slow. It's a great plane for beginners, I would think. Because it's so um, slow flying and easy to control. It's very stable. Uh, it's got a fair, a good amount of authority and pitch and roll, and stable in terms of yaw. Uh, so we'll use this to do the landing. So right now we're just heading out to get a good running distance on the runway. Which is something I would always recommend. Make sure you have plenty of distance to get lined up with the runway so that you don't have to panic at the last moment. <coughs> and finally, uh, and end up crashing your plane. So just flying out. So now that we've gotten some good distance between us and the runway, we can do a banking turn to turn around. And we're not going to go straight to 90 because we're not lined up with the runway. So now as we're getting up to the runway and lined up with it, we can turn to face it and provide some minor adjustments via yaw and then as we're getting closer we can throttle down make sure landing gear are deployed of course and then if you're coming in a bit too high you just pitch down to get that get closer, provide some more adjustments, and then as you get closer to the runway you want to pull up a bit, cut the engines by pressing X, and then just drift down and set down your plane. And then turn on the brakes. This was a little bit weird. Um, Simply because this plane does have a, some minor issues when landing. Um, yeah, with landing planes, it's just get lined up, uh, line up, and then slow down. As you get closer to the runway, you'll want to cut your engines and then touch down slowly. Um, because planes are, these planes in KSB are pretty sturdy, but they can only take so much of a beating. And if you hit them on the ground too hard, they'll break. Just like a lot of things. So we can do that again. We can come from this end this time. So, we'll get some distance from the runway. And depending on the plane, you may want to get more or less distance um, as you're approaching. Also, depending on how your plane functions, you want to go, you want to fly kind of low uh, so that you don't have to fall very far in order to touch the room. So, put away the landing gear for now. And then now that we're pretty far away from it, 
we can turn around. Don't go quite to the runway. And the runway is on KSP at in at KSC face uh, 270 coming towards the mountains and 90 going away from the mountains. Um, so now that we're lined up with the runway, we'll just so now that we're f uh, lined up with the runway in terms of position, we just need to line up with it in terms of angle. Make some minor corrections, slow down, decrease altitude, as we get closer we can keep losing that altitude and then pull up a little bit, cut the engines, and then just drift down and hit the brakes. Oop. And then we can screw up the landing. So, yeah. This plane has a history of the rear landing gear providing issues when landing. Um, as you can see, it didn't land well. <laughs> but that's just because of how the plane is designed. Um, because my landing gear for this plane are placed on the wings on the bottom, which aren't as stable as putting them on the fuselage. Uh, it might just need a small redesign with the tools in .9 Oh, uh, but landings are very simple. It's just get lined up in term, get lined up positionally, get lined up rotationally, slow down, lose altitude, cut engines, pull up, or flare, uh, and then touch down. I could draw some diagrams, but. <laughs> I'm no artist. Uh, yeah, so. What else should I cover? That's good that it's been informative. I'm not a great teacher, so I'm glad that I'm able to at least teach you something even if I'm not great at it. Um, so what else should I cover, just so that you know you have an idea of what to do correctly? And how to do it correctly, rather. Let's turn... Nah, we don't need song requests. Let's just turn on KSP's music. Okay, uh, is there's so I kind of covered design of aircraft and um, what control surfaces do and landings and controlling it. it needs more rovers. Rovers are different, but yeah, that's kind of the idea. Um, rovers are pretty similar, so we can do rovers. We'll do rovers. Because uh, we're in the space plane hangar, and space plane hangar is good for rovers as well. So, rovers are kind of funky because we don't have a lot of pieces that are really good for building rovers. Um, so, we'll just stick with the Mark 1 inline. Oop. We'll start that over again. Now, because rovers, or well, rovers need these rover wheels, of course, we got these TR2Ls, 
We've also got the Rove Max Model S2s, the M1s, and then these ginormous XL3s. For most rovers, you'll want to use the M1 or the, two, the TR2L. Uh, I prefer the TR2L just because of how it looks. Um, although the M1's suspension is greater. So they've all got different purposes that, all different things that they're good at. <coughs> so um, the way these rover reels works is they run off of electric charge. So you need electric charge which is stored in these batteries, all different kinds of them. And you need that electric charge to get them running. So there's a lot of ways you can get electric charge. There's, it's stored in these batteries, of course, and in some command pods. Uh, so for this one, we'll just get a couple of these 1,000 electric charge batteries, just so we have plenty. And then, in order to generate it, uh, you'll need, in order to generate electric charge, you can use uh, rocket engines like the KR2L. Uh, which outputs a ton of thrust, so we won't use it. Um, you can use the LVN, you can use the LVT45. Um, but these rocket engines are all better for you know, rockets rather than rovers. Fortunately, there are non-combustive or non-combusting means of generating electricity. So we got things like solar panels, the Gigantor XL, as well as the OX2Ls, all these different ones, the little OX stats, and then best for rovers is the PBI, the PBNUK radioisotope thermoelectric generator, or the RTG. This is the best for generating electricity for rovers because solar panels will break if going too fast in atmosphere. Um, so if you're moving quickly the air will just rush past the solar panels and it'll break them off and that's bad because then you can't use them anymore. The RTGs, however, can just be stuck inside of things and they passively generate electricity so you don't have to worry about um, like deploying your solar panels when you're stopped and storing them away when you're moving so that you don't break them because these are just static objects they just sit there and generate electricity uh, Geek for Life if you want to rewatch the stream I'll make sure to highlight this and then I'll also probably post this to YouTube which I will post probably um, I'll probably post my YouTube down below the stream so if you're looking at the stream right here down below it is a bunch of boxes. I used to have one for my YouTube channel there, uh, but I removed it. Uh, so I'll put that back up there uh, soon so that you can just link to that. So, um, wheels are pretty robust, they can go just about anywhere. But they're kind of funky in how they are positioned, especially the TR2Ls, because it's not obvious how they need to be aligned. Fortunately, it's like once you know how they need to be aligned, it's pretty easy to align it. So with the TR2Ls, the bigger part of the base, with the or the big bolts on the top, need to be up at the top with the springs below this shelf, and then the wheelbase with the steering and the stuff <laughs> um, below it. So 
the wider part of the base goes at the top and the thinner part goes at the bottom. With other wheels like the Rove Max M1, you can tell because the suspension pushes the wheel down below the base and for the most part it's pretty easy uh, to align to get these wheels aligned correctly because like they're all positioned kind of funky so if you just press S once it'll get them facing the right way and that goes for everything so if we start with these sideways we just press S once and place them and they're placed correctly so we're just going to copy that and paste it on the back and there's our little rover so we've got wheels at the front wheels at the back electricity storage and then electricity generation and that's all you need for a rover besides a control system which can be manned you can even use these command seats and heck we'll just get one of those to show you that that works and then you can also use probe cores all kinds of those and you can make rovers with just about anything as long as you provide ground clearance uh, and there and I created a tool over a year ago uh, called tweakable wheels which would allow you to adjust the amount of steering each wheel would use uh, I can load up that soon I'd have to restart KSB to do that but I can show that to you uh, soon that just makes um, like using these wheels a little bit easier and more intuitive from what I've experienced with that uh, so just to finish off this uh, rover we'll get some lights and we'll make these a little bit yellowish So we'll use those lights to illuminate things if it's dark, and then we can also use um, these antennae just as decoration. And that's a mod. We don't need that. So. So rovers are pretty easy to control. Um, brake, B is for brakes, just as with aircraft. Um, w is to accelerate forward. S is to accelerate backwards. B is brakes, again. Um, D is to steer right. S is to steer left, um, depending on how your rover is set up. Oh yeah, thanks. Um, so there's a lot of so there's a few different options you can use on the wheels. You can lock steering, which makes it so that they don't steer at all, <clears throat> or you can invert steering so that they steer the opposite way, because by default the steering automatically <clears throat> tells. Uh, figures out which way it needs to steer based on the center of mass. So the center of mass for this vehicle is right in the middle. So these wheels on the back know that they need to turn left when you press the button to turn right so that you keep turning right. Uh, 
and then we can do that. <coughs> uh, rovers are unfortunately kind of unstable in terms of handling, but that's in this case that's just based on how wide your wheelbase is. So if I had a wider base, which we can do by building a wider wheelbase, of course. Um, we can just use these modular girder segments. That's messing it up. Let's try again. Alright, so depending on like where you're placing them, the wheels may need to be adjusted even more. Uh, you can just Recopy that. We'll take these off and then we'll make these lights red. Oops. Um, tweakable wheels was actually not that hard for me to develop because it was just like accessing the information stored in the wheels and then changing it. Uh, I can. Uh, because I like have a lot of experience, well a fair bit of experience with programming in Unity. Um, I knew a lot of what I needed to do so I just applied what I knew and I got it working. So um, we got a, wheel, a wider wheelbase now which should make this a little bit more stable. As you can see we're going to be a lot less prone to flipping. So if we went over this little bump with the previous design, we flipped. With this one, we're not flipping. So this is just based off of the stability of your wheelbase, how high your center of mass is compared to where your wheels are. And even with this vehicle, we were able to roll it. Uh, but, you know, that's life. KSP is tricky. So, next up on the rover list is little EVA seats. And these are pretty simple. You just bring your curve up to them, right click on the seat, and then click board, and then it's a little external command pod. Your Kerbal can still control stuff from there rather than having to be inside of a cockpit. So you, that's good for making smaller rovers. You can also turn on the Kerbal's lights with L just like normally you would do on a Kerbal. And then you've got other options like you can leave the seat. Apparently you can take surface samples from the command seat. And yeah, uh, docking mode is also good for rovers, so we'll show that. So down here at the bottom left, you've got the staging and docking and orbit map options. So, if, so you can just, by default, it sticks with staging. But you can just click on the docking one, or I believe it's delete to toggle to it. And then that helps reduce flipping. Because the way staging works and the way rover wheels works is if you look at the control indicators, you'll notice that as we turn, we're also applying yaw via the command pod. So that can be solved by either toggling torque on the command pod, which depending on where you are will be fine, or it could cause some issues. 
Um, but if you don't want to deal with that, you can just switch to docking mode, and then you can use space to toggle on and off the uh, your rotation controls. So here it's just control mode linear, which uses RCS, uh, and that's a whole nother subject. Space uses uh, the controls on the road. Or it uses the uh, reaction wheels and whatnot. Uh, so that's pretty much rovers. Um, what else can we do? So rovers are basic, just keep a wide wheelbase or your center of mass low. Both if possible. Low center of mass, wide wheelbase. Um, wheels are kind of funky, but they're not too hard to use. Uh, let me actually pull up tweakable wheels, just so that we have... So that I can show that off. I don't... The last time I used that was 0.24. No, the last time I used that was ages ago. Goodness. I believe that's it. It's been so long since I used my own plug in that. I don't even have the stuff for it anymore. The stuff in my more recent games. Alright. Let's fire that up again. So, in short, what Tweakable Wheels does is it adds a few more options to the wheels. Uh, like, it allows you to adjust how much wheels steer, how much um, torque they use. Uh, what else does it do? Oh, it also lets you adjust how much the wheels break, so you can make the front wheels break less, so if you have a rover that's prone to flipping over, they won't flip over as much. Um, I don't even know, know if it'll work with 0.90. I, I'm sure it, I'm pretty sure it will work with 0.25, and it should work with 0 0.90 unless they've changed stuff with the. with the um, how the wheel module works so we'll hope and pray that it works correctly all right we'll load up. Where's rover demo? There it is. Alright. Oops. So, right click on the wheels, we've got the regular three options, lock steering, disable motor, and invert steering. 
but with tweakable wheels we now have some more options so we've got stuff like torque percentage and steering angle and braking percentage uh, but you can't really see how that affects the operation ex in the space plane hangar, so we'll just have to load it up, launch it, and then we can show that off. So we want the brakes to be neutral. So the way these works. So we'll just take a look at the front right one for now. So steer goes that much, goes so much. Um, tweakable wheels allows you to adjust that. So if we increase steering a little to two, you'll see it turns more than the wheels normally do. And you can even see that adjustment happen while we change the value. That's good. It's good that it's uh, like it's good that it's helpful. Um, so yeah, we can make the wheels turn more or less than they normally do. So if we set steering angle to zero, that wheel won't steer at all. If we set it to two, it'll steer twice as much as it normally will. So we'll just set that to 2 and we'll turn these back ones to 0 so it's more like a regular car mm -hmm. and it behaves fairly similarly. It's not as advanced as something like Fire Spitter but then Fire Spitter sticks with landing gear uh, whereas tweakable wheels just adds a few extra options to the rover wheels, the stock ones. Um, so the next big thing, which is actually the first uh, part, the first option that I implemented for tweakable wheels was braking percentage. <coughs> so, as you'll see in a moment, this rover kind of jumps the back end kind of jumps up when it stops. And that's because we've got a lot of torque, a braking torque, at the front. So we can reduce it to something like 0.5. Then we'll accelerate for a while. And then we'll stop. And you'll see more stretching <laughs> for the rover, and the, you'll see that the rover stretched, stretched rather than jumped up on the back. So that's a little bit too much, too little braking torque on the front. So we'll increase it to 0.75, and then we can try that again. And then stop it and you'll see it didn't stretch a lot and it also didn't flip or try to flip like it did before so just to show that off again minimal stretching and barely any of and the back barely moved up at all uh, whereas with normally it would flip up a little bit we don't have that here so the next big thing for tweakable wheels is the torque percentage. So here we can look at the resource draw for this wheel and it's 0 0.70000 units. What torque percentage does is it adjusts how much torque the wheel applies. So if we decrease it to zero, this wheel is drawing zero units of energy, but it's also putting out zero torque. It's also not putting out any torque. It's not accelerating the rover at all. This is a bigger deal if we do it on two wheels on the same side. All 
All right, not as big as a deal as I let, as I made you think, but we're not steering, and we're still turning right a little bit. Now, if we put all of them onto zero, we can. Um, I don't know how to show that really well, uh, except by dropping everything down very small values. So if we got everything at 0 0.05, we're not going to be using hardly any electric charge, but we're barely accelerating at all. Versus putting everything back up to one and we're accelerating pretty fast. So that's just tweakable wheels which is a little utility plugin that I put together for KSB. It should be on the forum somewhere. Let me find a link real quick. That should be somewhere. All right, so that's the link to uh, Tweakable Wheels if you want to pick that up uh, when I archive this on Twitch and YouTube. I'll also put that in the descriptions uh, so that you don't have to go searching around for it because it's like not really well known. You know, it's just how things are. Um, I've also got a couple of other plugins uh, but Tweakable Wheels is the most useful one. So, yeah. In any case, that's pretty much that's pretty much all the lessons that I had for now. Um, I can do some just you know missions or something. Go to space if we want. Let's go check out something in space.